Hello, Macy here. Shore leave has been cancelled until a shuttle can be sent from Kerbin, and with hand and attacks a constant fear, the crew is becoming restless and volatile. Pilot Bill Jr.'s hazing is becoming more severe in nature, and twice has needed intervention from the captain. Yesterday, however, a threatening message was found scrawled on the wardroom door regarding First Officer Bill. The matter has been taken very seriously and has been looked into. Onboard house in one, tempers are also fraying. This time arguments about where Captain Chabret should land the ship. Scientists studying weather patterns on Jewel demand it is visible in the night sky because lathe is tidally locked, so it's always in a fixed position from the ground. As does the astrophysics department studying Jewel's magnetosphere and aurorae to better understand the Van Allen belt radiation and any threat that could pose to the colony. The marine scientists demand a location close to a shoreline, of course to continue their search for life, or failing that, the introduction of life. Um, and geologists require hill formations to study sedimentary layering and so on. So the landing site has to be very well considered, or risk alienating the very people who funded the project. So with all things considered, I've finally chosen this little continent here, which should please everyone, hopefully. Jewel will be visible in the sky, and I'm going to try and aim for that little cove there. and so appease everyone hopefully there's definitely some hill formations so let's get this thing on the ground so a deorbit burn from the other side of the moon just to bring this side into atmosphere always overshoot it by about a tenth of an orbit otherwise you will fall short every time so let's get rid of this interplanetary stage now our trajectory is terminal um, you can see my separatrons firing off there to get it away from us a beautiful dual rise as we approach our target. The only engines remaining on this now are jet engines. So as soon as we hit atmosphere we can ignite them but now we're just free falling. Like I said I've had to overshoot this target quite a bit but when we get closer you'll see it will pull in that trajectory as soon as we hit atmosphere. This is now the continent we're aiming for, hoving into view and I'm going to try and get to that cove, like I said, you can just see it there. And the flames are starting to lick at the wings of the colony ship. It's not going to be as fiery as it was before because we're going at a fraction of the speed. But all the colonists are strapped in tightly and nervous about this descent and what they may find on this strange alien world. So very, very far from home. But there's definitely no turning back now. We're slowing down now to more manageable speeds and I can think about choosing a more specific landing location because at the moment I'm heading straight for the bay. So I've ignited my jet engines to just slow me a little bit. The quadrant style configuration of these engines is giving me a lot of stability actually. It's um, quite easy to control and it's not moving around too much but I'm going to level up now and try and float over to that little peninsula I can see over there. There's a little island which would be nice to land on, very defensive, but I'm not sure the geologists would approve of the swim. So I'm going to go for this little peninsula here, I think. It's a good position. There's some hills quite close by, a few kilometers away. Um, plenty of ocean, and I think we'll make a nice little base for future ships that come here because we will be expanding this colony of course if it's successful. Now I'm over the target and I'm coming down straight I'll deploy my chutes. I don't really need parachutes because I've got plenty of fuel as you can see but landing with jet engines is very difficult in fact I am a bit worried about this. The reason being that jet engines apply a quite severe delay on thrust and thrust changes so um, you have to come down very very steadily and if you make a mistake it's very hard to correct in the time frames that you need to so here we go the final descent I don't know what's going on with the shore there it's at the, the coast of chaos maybe this was a bad landing site after all I'm sure it's just this angle we'll have to go and have a look but that doesn't look right does it oh dear anyway we'll ignore that for now okay here we are final descent. I'm going to come in as slowly as I can because like I've said with these jet engines it can be very difficult but I'm still coming down a bit fast so I'm going to throttle up a bit 
and no, no, I've overtaken my parachutes. That is exactly what I didn't want to happen. So now I'm just on jet engines alone. Oh no, that's too quick. Ooh. That was lucky. We are down. Not a very good um, landing. Sorry about that. But we are down. We are on lathe. The colony is here. So without any further ado, let's deploy the colony. First person off the ship is Al, who um, we can use to check out the atmosphere and potential hazards for our colonists. The Al unit comes with a full suite of scientific instruments to carry out testing. It has a very similar AI software to the ED series Astrodroids, which Spirit Wolf are now manufacturing en masse which makes it fully autonomous in the field and can go on extended operations. He's reading a surface temperature of just under 5 degrees which is positively toasty actually, I thought it was colder than that but I guess we're on the equator. Um, gravity is about 4 fifths that of Kerbin and so is the atmospheric pressure so a spring in the step of every colonist but not hazardous so just put up the aerial here and relay our findings and now the first Kerbin off the ship, Jenler, project overseer, the hated Jenler, he has to be the first off, the company man, and with much pride and arrogance, surveys the land and deems it safe for the rest to come out. He's not a monster really, he's just a professional. And now for Merbold, the media executive, who needs to very carefully stage this important PR event. The weekly reality TV show on board has been a soaring success back on Kerbin and she knows exactly who she wants off first. Greg Food and Janini, the love interest. Clear winners on the viewers poll and much loved by everybody it seems but much hated by all the scientists on board. But they've made the front page of newspapers globally and Spirit Wolf of course stand to gain from this. Now that nauseous affair is over, the real work on lathe begins with Aldson's expedition party, Henry, Seanway and Ludvin, who are going to go up into the hills and begin their geology work and study some of the rocks and sediments and attempt to uncover some of the history of this beautiful world. The owl unit comes furnished with four positions that can carry kerbals around on their various work and it carries all their equipment as well. So we're going to head over to those hills in the distance there, which should suit their needs, hopefully. It's a long walk without Al, so they're very grateful for the ride. And I have to say, it is quite a lot of fun driving this little thing around. I think it works quite well. Um, but I run into problems, like always. I run into problems. I get to this certain point, and my kerbals are dropping off like overripe fruit. And I have no idea why, but there the rest of them go. Um, problems. And now I can't switch off the ladder. So I searched the forums and I searched everywhere and it's a known bug apparently because I've got a certain distance away from the other object which is the colony over there. You can no longer switch on a ladder. So this has failed. I obviously didn't come across this in the testing phase. So Owl's left them some supplies and hoping that they can make some sort of meaningful work from that position. It's not ideal for them and they're not happy about it but until we can solve this problem they're going to have to be there on their own. We can always take the colony ship over there to pick them up but for now they're going to see what they can do and I'm just going to park this back here for now and the second group of scientists we're sending out is the marine biologists and this is Burster and his assistant James who are going to check out the oceans of lathe for any sign of life or its eligibility for life to be introduced. Spirit Wolf have been to the oceans of Lave looking for life before but that was a pilot not a qualified marine biologist so hopefully they can come up with a better result. Maybe some microbiotic life. And this is Captain Chadbrit, the elusive Captain Chadbrit surveying the scene from his um, command bridge and making sure the systems are working and safe so this is the colony. This is what it looks like deployed. 22 Kerbals going about their daily business and stretching their legs after a very long time in space. Come nightfall it's beautiful because 
you can see Joule perfectly lit up there in the background. So the um, astrophysicists are going to be very happy with this location. It will be quite easy, I think, to get the data they need. So all in all, this mission is a resounding success so far. I think everyone is happy with the location. I just hope 22 colonists so isolated and far from home can get on with one another without too much drama and upset. You can see the civilians here keeping away from the rest as usual. And um, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, bye for now.